Get off your ass. That's what we're saying. <laughs> saying. That's all it takes. It's not that hard. Walk around the block a few times. And particularly after a meal, as we spoke about last time, walking after a meal, get 4,000 in. 10,000 seems to be um, even better. Well, it'll stimulate the uptake of glucose, but also it'll get your muscles moving and stimulate the production of new blood vessels. Make sure that you don't run out of oxygen later in life. But mostly what happens when you move, the first thing that happens is a really important reaction that involves one of these longevity pathways, the middle one that I refer to called AMPK. AMPK, AMPK registers energy in the cell, right. which is chemical energy called ATP. And when you have low levels of ATP, AMPK gets activated. And it stands for AMP activated kinase. And AMP is what you get a lot of when you don't have enough of this fuel ATP. Long story short, when you have high levels of AMPK activity, you will make more mitochondria, which gives you long lasting benefits. So after you've exercised, your body will be making more power, more of these, um, these organelles, we call them, that will actually give you long-term health benefits beyond the period of exercise, right? And that there's a reason why vigorous exercise is so important beyond just, just walking and standing. It's that you have hypoxia, low levels of oxygen, are undoubtedly good for you, even though they may not feel good. Um, and when you know you're, you're hypoxic when you're panting so much you can't, cannot carry out a conversation. That's what you're aiming for, for at least 10 minutes, a few times a week. So why is being out of breath important? Very rarely people ask that. Well, so the, again, it's this hormesis idea, a little bit of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So what's happening is when you're hypoxic is you're turning on uh, what's called HIF-1 alpha, hypoxia inducible, factor. And that pathway turns on a bunch of really helpful genes that control new blood vessel growth and mitochondria. My good friend and, uh, and colleague over at Harvard won the Nobel Prize in 2019 for discovering HIF-1-alpha and its role in biology. Now, the other thing that happens in that, there's two things. So one is the HIF-1-alpha that turns on a genetic program that's good. But what also happens is you get free radicals generated. Because when you don't have enough oxygen, those electrons that, uh, that should normally be used by what's called the electron transport chain in mitochondria, which generates ATP, uh, they fly out and they become a super oxide radical. So that as you get older, our muscles and our brain become less sensitive to the insulin the pancreas is putting out increasingly more and more trying to cope with this insensitivity that happens. Now that's largely, we think now, because of this aging biological clock, that the genes that are required for a muscle cell to function or a brain cell to function are getting switched on and off in the wrong way. We call this X differentiation. Basically cells are losing their identity as they get older and not putting out a particular protein called GLUT4, which is a, a glucose transporter on the outside of the cell. So the muscles are not bringing in the glucose. There's two problems, right? First of all, you don't have your energy to burn in the mitochondria to make energy. The other problem is that that sugar, that glucose that circulates in your bloodstream and doesn't get taken up into your muscle and your brain starts to damage the lining of the blood vessels and we know that is type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So VEGF is made by muscles after you exercise. Mm -hmm. You've gone for your run or even your walk, but running is even better. And there's a, a gene called PGC1 alpha that is what's called a transcription factor. It'll be made, it'll bind to the upstream side of the VEGF gene and make more of this VEGF protein. Now VEGF will be secreted out of the muscle and diffuse or just leak out into the lining of the blood vessels. Now the lining of the blood vessels is made of cells called endothelial cells, which pick up the signal. They have little receptors that sense VEGF. And when they get that signal, that says, oh, wow, we're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger for the last week. We better build more blood vessels. And they do that. Normally, if you have a tube, which is a capillary, almost microscopic um, blood vessels, what happens is the endothelial cells will start to branch out to the side and make a new blood vessel. And that's what you get with exercise. Conversely, if you sit around all day, you won't build new blood vessels. You'll actually have fewer and fewer and your muscle and your brain start to get starved of oxygen. Now, one of the big problems we discovered is during aging, that signaling pathway, that signaling mechanism is defective. And even though you're exercising as you get older, you're not getting the benefits of it. You don't get the new blood vessels. And but you can see this in the mouse. I mean, when you take, when, when you pull the mouse apart, not to be too graphic, but you can actually see these thinning. 
We don't even need to hurt the mouse to see this. We can use imaging to see the blood flow in a mouse uh, without hurting it. And we can see the bright red areas where the blood's flowing nicely. And in an old mouse, you don't get that, even with exercise. But we found a way to restore the youth of the muscle and restore the ability of that VEGF to trigger new blood vessel formation. And the trick was to turn on the production of NAD, which is the fuel for the sirtuin survival circuit.